you've been living in your car for six weeks or six months, and that's many of the times the cases that we've been dealing with. Uh, this is quite nice. You've got a bed, you've got um, laundry facilities, you've got bathroom facilities, you've got food on the table. You know, you don't have to now worry about, A, where, where are my kids going to sleep tonight? What am I going to feed them tonight? Uh, are we going to be safe tonight? Y you can't think about tomorrow or next week or the future because you're in survival mode. You have to take care of you and your family today. You know, we let them that first week or two sometimes, just depending on the actual situation they've come from, you just let them come in and let them be and let them know it's okay, you're taken care of, you're, you're safe, you don't have to worry about food tonight. So uh, it was right about five years ago, a little bit over five years ago, that the house or the church purchased that house. Uh, we've run a variety of different ministries through that house. Um, quite honestly, looking for a good fit. So, right. Multiple attempts, multiple reassessments, frankly, a lot of failures. Half of the house, we have a relationship with Catholic Charities, whereby we house uh, refugees. Uh, in that house so it's a temporary stay for them intended specifically when they arrive if they don't have a permanent place for the refugees yet to live Eritrea, uh, Somalia, Iraq, uh, Afghanistan we've had 91 people come through refugees come through in this part of the house if you need a two or a three bedroom or larger apartment uh, those costs will start to run thirteen fourteen fifteen hundred dollars a month at a minimum active volunteers in that program thirty to thirty five now something like that um, and, and what they do is uh, when we get notice that a new family is coming in at the airport the volunteers will meet them at the airport be standing there waiting for them when they come uh, they'll escort them all the way back to the house uh, there oftentimes will be another volunteer or two waiting at the house for them. Sometimes a meal will have been prepared. And then what will happen is the volunteers will literally surround this family to provide them with support and guidance while they're here. As many times the volunteers will drive them to these different appointments. Things like start to teach them how to ride the bus and uh, the value of the currency. They'll go shopping with them. Right? They'll go for, in the summer, they'll go for walks down to the park with them because there's a park that's not too far. So all of those things. So they help them with the mandatory things, but then they also just surround them with love and friendship. So if the families end up staying in the area, which sometimes they do, uh, the volunteers tend to, to stay with them. So the other half is uh, a relationship with, that we have with the Beaverton School District. And in that relationship, uh, working with them, uh, they initially identify families who are homeless. On the day of the school year, there are three to five families who are homeless living in their car, sleeping in a tent. We use the house not just as shelter, but we have a program there uh, whereby we provide these families with the assistance that they need in order to gain stability in their lives. You know, in some cases, uh, it may be an education. Maybe they don't have high school education. So we'll start to, to work on them with a GED. Maybe it's uh, simply finding employment. It could be um, that mom had to leave because of, the, of a domestic violence situation. We actually have two uh, counselors that we work with who donate their time, um, who, who come to the house. Uh, but if you look at it in terms of there are others out there, how can I work with others so that in a collective and collaborative way we can have an impact, I think you truly can have an impact. So you can see, I mean, they, and this is typical, this was not just, uh, just for you. Um, the floors get swept and mopped and cleaned and countertops and, you know, all that stuff uh, gets taken care of. In part, uh, not only for the cleanliness of it, but the other part is you have to recognize when you have more than one family living together, when you get done, somebody's going to be right behind you. And you've got to leave it clean, ready for them to use. It is interesting to watch the spiritual journey over time. It does. Because 
what they begin to see is that uh, people do care about them. people feel so good and feel so um, comfortable in this church um, they, they want to give back 